Hey guys, welcome back to the Run Testers. In this video, we're going to be looking at the absolute essential items that each of us Run Testers uses week in, week out. These are the items that we've maybe had for many years. We've, we're still using them. There's new kit that's come in that we just, just hasn't made the cut as much as these items. Some of them are big, some of them are small, but they're all items that we really, really like. The kind of things that you use so much, you're worried that the brand might stop making them. So you go and buy them in bulk. That's what we're talking right here. Those kind of products that are just so good, you just want loads of them. And in this video, we're gonna be looking at Kieran's favorite picks. So let's take a look and see what Kieran's chosen. Okay, so Kieran, you're the next run tester to pick your essential kit and accessories. How easy was it to choose what you put in your list? I actually found it pretty easy. I'm, I'm quite a creature of habit and I've got some items that I will always sort of go to. And you know, they, these become my kind of tried and trusted. And yeah, I've even sort of not gone out to run if I can't find this particular item on some days when it might be windy, wet and cold and I don't quite feel like it anyway. This is, this is like, can't find these. It's my final excuse to say, actually, I'm just going to sit back down on the sofa. <laughs> and that, does that happen a lot? Not, not too often, thankfully, but it has been known to happen. So yeah, it's like, well, you know, and where, where's my, where's my, oh, and if it's not there, I'm like, ah, that's it. I can't run without that thing. So yeah, we'll, we'll chalk yeah. that one off. I know that feeling. And, um, and is it kit that you've had for a long time or are these things that are, are quite recent? Uh, so a couple, I've got a couple of items on there that are fairly recent, actually, and have replaced some of my old favourites. Uh, but actually, others I've had for you know up to two years longer. Uh, they've things that actually I will replace when they wear out, or I've got another one spare in the cupboard already because uh, I know that I, I like it. And I don't want them to sort of discontinue them or not be able to get hold of them. So yeah, it's a bit of a mixed bag actually. It's quite I think for, as a run tester, it's quite interesting when you sort of get things to come in and kind of challenge the position in your kind of everyday run kit and you sort of weigh it up against yeah. those items. It, I don't actually rotate all that often, actually. It takes quite a lot. It takes quite a good new yeah. piece of kit to change things up for me. Good. Well, with that in mind, let's uh, move on to the first first thing you've picked. What have you got for us? Yeah, and actually, actually speaking of things not changing up, this first one actually ha is new. I've only had these for about six months and these are, they're called Chi Malp. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. It's a French brand. Uh, basically used to make mountain gear, but it's a Chi Malp uh, two-in-one trail shorts. Now, these, basically, as you can see, they've, they've got a base layer short stitched in. Um, they're, they're your kind of classic, whoops, they're your classic kind of longer trail shorts. They've got a little bit of compression in the inner base layer, but it's not too heavy. Uh, they're really comfortable. The, I like the fact that compression is light because it means if you want to wear a different pair of compression base layer shorts underneath that you can actually get away with double layering on these shorts. It's not too tight on the legs, but by far and away, the best thing about these shorts is the fact that they've got more pockets than any other shorts I've ever come across. Yes. So I, yeah, I've, I've heard about these from various run testers. I've never actually tried them myself, but uh, the pockets seem to be the, the big feature of them. There's, there's four. And I know this is something that it's a constant frustration when you buy a pair of shorts you like and you look for a pocket and they've got one of those tiny little back pockets that you can basically fit a set of keys in, maybe a gel, yeah. but you're definitely not fitting a larger phone in. But well, these shorts actually cover everything. So they've got, they've got one of those kind of slightly smaller pockets in the back. They've got a larger pocket that comes on the side here. They've then got another pocket on the other side which isn't zippered. It's got this kind of covering flap but that's also big enough to fit quite a lot of stuff in. And then they've got that thing that's become something I think we're sort of more familiar with kind of gym goers having, which is the sort of the stitched in tight pocket on the inner compression layer. Yep. But that inner pocket will also hold, uh, I've got an iPhone XS Max, 
it'll fit in that pocket nice and tight, no bounce, won't fall out, and it's a really nice, easy, accessible place to have your phone on any kind of run. Um, but one of my favorite things, I guess, about these shorts is all of those pockets mean that these are really, really versatile. So yes, on a shorter run, everyday run, you can just carry keys, cards, phone, all of that kind of stuff, no problem at all. But you can scale up if you want to take these on a longer ultra run. And if you're going to be running for, you know, over 10 hours up to some of the really long runs that I've done, you can fit everything you need easy access to in these shorts. And that goes for like quite a lot of food. So I can fit an hour's worth of carbohydrates into one of those stash pockets. So around 60 grams worth of carbs. So you're talking about, I don't know, that's at least kind of six different products in there. So, no problem so at all. Say, have them where I can easily access them. So, so you'd say that these shorts could work for everyone. They're not just a trail short or they're not just an ultra pair of shorts. Yeah, I actually, I think they, you know, I really love them just for my daily runs because you don't obviously have to use all of that pocket space, but there's enough zippered pockets for that general, the general stuff that you'd carry with you. Um, stashing, you know, if you want to, and then actually when you go onto trails or if you're doing night running, if you've got a head torch you want to take on and off, you can pocket it quite easily. It'll t they'll, they'll take a lot of kit, but if you just want to run in them in the gym just with your phone, fine, they'll work for that as well. They're very comfortable. I've had no chafing problems with them. And um, the, only, the only problem I've had is, and this, I find this with a lot of shorts that don't, I'm just trying to reach for it now, but on the front, the, uh, the cords, the tightening cords pulled out because they weren't stitched or knotted enough. Just a bit of a frustration, I can't mm -hmm. feed them back in. I'm not dex dexterous enough. I haven't got the dexterity. Dexterous is not a word. <laughs> <laughs> it's close, close enough. Um, and a lot of, uh, well, I was looking at these shorts uh, on the website and they do look quite figure hugging on the model that's wearing them on the website. Are, are, they, are they like that when you wear them or is there a little bit more give than it shows? No, they do fingers? come up quite tight. They've got quite a, a cut that I quite like, but yeah, they are, they are quite tight. I actually run in a medium at the moment. I think I could easily upgrade into a, a large and not be uncomfortable. I think, you know, you could sort of flex between those. So if you like a little bit more room, I think probably your best bet is to, to maybe shunt, shunt up a size to the ones that you would normally go for. Um, but yeah, they do, they are quite figure hugging. So, and that goes for the belt too. The belt is quite elasticated, so it does hold quite firm. So if you've got, yeah. if you're carrying a bit more around there, <laughs> if you'd like it to be a little bit looser, yeah. go up a size. Good to know. Okay. And um, how long have and, you had these for? Uh, 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 have these been the same pair or have you had multiple pairs of these? So I've just got one pair of these at the moment. I am going to buy another pair and I'm going to buy a size up. Um, I've had them about six months and I, if they're clean, I wear them. It's as simple as that. If they're, if they're there, I will put these on ahead of every other short. They're not cheap. They're about £54 in the UK. Um, I'm not too sure of the US price, but I think you're going to have to buy either in pounds or euros and shipped to the US anyway, because they're a European brand, but around 54 pounds, so oh. not cheap. A, a bit of an investment then. Definitely, but I think apart from that cord problem, they look like to me like they're built to last. You know, I've had them six months and I've worn them, you know, three runs a week and there's no sign of wearing them yet. And, um, and you wear them for all of your races as well. Do you ever have any issues with chafage or rubbing? No issues with chafage or rubbing, but I, I have to say that I do back up my protection on that by wearing some uh, two Tom sport shield and other kind of stuff. I, I'm, I'm Captain Vaseline when it comes to that. I'm not taking any risks. Smart move. Smart move. Um, brilliant. Okay. Well, let's move on to your next choice then. Okay. So next up we have, and this is another one, but I'm going to, I'm kind of going to double up here. It's a bit of a cheat, but I've got two items from Under Armour and they're both in the rush base layer range so one of them is the Under Armour Rush base layer shorts um, and I've got I really like the Under Armour Rush base layer short sleeve tee now these are the heat gear shorts that I run with and the, the tee is also a heat gear they do have cold gear versions of these but again I mean my, my primary reason for picking these they've got compression in them but it's not too heavy but my primary reason I've enjoyed both of these layers is the fact that they don't chafe. And I can run with these and, and not have chafing, and particularly the, the top layer. Tom, I, I had, a, I had a sh one base layer shirt that I wore. It was from a brand called Champion. It's like an old school brand here. I don't know whether it was in the US, in the, but it's, it's here in the UK. I got given that layer and I wore it for about 
38 to 40 of the marathons that I ran in. And I never dared go outside of using that because I knew my nipples would be safe with it yeah. until I used the Under Armour Rush base layer. And it's got that nice, the fabric is nice and shiny and smooth. And it just, it just doesn't rub. And you can wear it for short runs, long runs, be out for 12, 15 hours. Mm -hmm. And you know that you're not going to have to keep reapplying Vaseline or worry about coming back with that worst thing, which is red raw nipples. It's, no, nobody wants that. I tried a few of the um, the, the Rush kit um, options from Under Armour, and they they are quite on the tight side. I found, um, and I and I don't really particularly like tight clothes, so I do find that I have to kind of buy a slightly bigger size every time just to just to make sure it's comfortable, otherwise it can be a little yeah. bit unforgiving. Yeah, I mean, they, they kind of describe it as kind of a second skin fit, particularly on the top layer. And the shorts actually do come up, you know, you, you are kind of squeezed into them and it is quite compact. So it's one of those things that when you come off after a marathon, you take them off, it's like the relief, <laughs> it's like release. So yeah, yes. <laughs> maybe, maybe again, you want to look at the sizing on those. Um, the other thing I'll say about um, the base layer shorts is you have... It does give you an extra, they've got an extra one of those little zipper pockets in the back. You can't fit much in there, but actually it does give you a little bit of extra storage. And if you pop a set of keys in those underneath your shorts as well, it stops that kind of jiggling sound, which is quite annoying over a long period of time if you hear your keys rattling up and down. Yep. And, and uh, the uh, Rush gear is, it, it talks about having this infrared technology, which every time I've read or written about it, I've kind of thought, well, what is this? How does it work? What is it meant to do? Does it work? Yeah, so, so basically it's, it's infused with Celiant technology. Now, Celiant is a company that produce different kinds of kind of techno fabrics, if you like. And this, the, the, the gear they've got here is infused with this bioceramic kind of material that is supposed to reflect your body's own kind of heat, but reflect the infrared rays back into the muscles. And the idea is that a bit like an infrared sauna or some of the machines that have come out recently, this is supposed to penetrate more deeply into the muscles to return heat energy, but without making you hot. So it's supposed to give you the benefits of heat without the downsides. Does it work? I mean, I don't know. It's one of those things that's quite hard to discern. I, for me personally, yeah. I don't buy, or I don't use these for that reason. I use them because I like the way they feel, but it's one of those things like an added feature. Okay. And have you just got one set of these items or have you got multiple pairs of options of them i've got multiple pairs they're identical so i've got two two of the base layer tops two of the shorts the base layer tops i've had for about two years and they are starting to show signs of wear around the kind of collars and on the cuffs where some of the threading is coming away but you know i've worn those thousands of miles so you know that's to be expected good sounds nice and just on price tom all right then 20 20 we, oh yes 24 pounds in the UK for the top, and I think it's 54 for the base layer bottoms. I couldn't, Okay, so big confession, I couldn't find them on the US site. I do find Under Armour's retail site very hard to find the exact product. So what we'll do is we'll try and pop links in the caption below so everyone can see the specific products that, we've, that I've been talking about. Perfect, okay, that sounds good. Let's uh, move on to the next one. Like a couple of the other run testers on here, I've gone for a belt textbook it's it's a very useful item i've gone for the flip belt zipper though which is this one i've had this for a long long time i probably five years or so um so much to the point where actually my zip has lost the pulley bit which is a bit frustrating but the, the flip belt zipper yep. I, this is this has just been a godsend for me actually and i it's one of the most trusted pieces of kit that i own and i if i can't find this it is a problem basically because you can carry everything you want in here. Having one of these, if I can't find my other shorts that I talked about earlier, this means I can, I can carry most things that I need here. And I sometimes I'll even double up with this belt and those shorts, so I've got maximum kind of storage capacity. But essentially what you're getting with a flip belt is a zippered front pocket that can hold a phone. It's big enough to, and it stretches so you can fit most phones in there. And then you've got these sort of side openings around the back that are actually uh, there's no kind of walls in between them. So the whole back bit is kind of almost like one big compartment, but with these kind of openings that you can squeeze things into. And I guess like every like the other flip belts, the idea is that you put your things in and then you flip it inside out. It holds all of your kit against your body, means it can't fall out, holds it securely, no bounce. Um, 
and the zipper I guess just adds a little bit of extra protection if you if you like that. One of the other features that this has uh, that I really like, if I'm trying to find it, I can't find it in there. It's got a hook which you can attach other things to, like headphone cases, keys, uh, whatever else that you really want to make sure doesn't fall out. Things don't, but that's just a bit of added security in there for that reason as well. Um, I really like the fact that you can, in the back pockets, you can, if you've got the sort of long, thin gels, you can stash four or five gels in each compartment, no problem at all. Um, it's comfortable, it doesn't cut in, and yeah, I think, you know, you'd be surprised at the amount of kit that you can fit into this belt. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a popular option. I know Mike, Mike um, has been wearing on quite a bit. I think Mike actually has the, the unzippered version of it. Um, yeah. But I've got, I imagine the zip's quite useful if, if you're a runner and you've got quite a lot of valuables in there. Yeah, and you know, if you're, again, over an ultra, if you're, when your mind goes, when you're deep into a run and you think you've put your phone back into a pocket properly and you might not have, you know, it can fall out. So that just having that extra bit of zipping it up, you know, it's, it's totally secure. Uh, I think it just gives you a little bit of extra safety. Um, there is, uh, yeah. there is, there is no kind of separate sort of little inside section in here. So you can't put two things in there. You have to make sure your keys go in another pocket to your phone to avoid your screen scratching. The other thing that I'm, if I'm going to pick a hole in this is that it's not very waterproof. So if you're on a rainy day, water st will still get through this fabric and into your, your phone pocket. So if your phone isn't waterproof, I have been, you know, I've had times when I've pulled my phone out, gone to use it, and it's just kaput, covered right. in water. So you might have to put, put some sort of plastic covering on it or, so, or something if you're running in the rain. Yeah, sometimes I'll just stick my phone in a, in a jiffy bag and pop it in there. And the, I, I've never actually used a, a flip belt. How, how does the, can you, you can't resize them or anything, can you? It's one size and you're stuck with it. Yeah, one size and that's it. I mean, it is, there is some give, it does stretch, but yeah, you, you've, got to, you've got to make sure you get the sizing right. I think I've got a medium in this, but that's one thing that you definitely want to check out. Um, yeah. The other thing, they come in sort of various different options. Like you said, there's, there's a, a non-zippered one, which is slightly cheaper. There's also a reflective one which is coated with kind of reflective material. So if you're a night runner or want to run in the dark, that's quite handy and that'll cost you a little bit more. Uh, I'm just going to check the price on this. You're going to pay £35 in the UK and uh, $36 in the US for the zippered version. Which is, I think, you know, for two years, that's not, it's a reasonable price actually. There are other, yeah. there are other sort of versions of this coming out, but the flip belt was pretty much the original on this. And I've, I like it. I'm actually going to see if I can get my zip fixed <laughs> okay so i can keep using it well uh i've got one last question on this actually um because i haven't used the flip belt i actually am quite interested in testing it out at some point the it, it looks like quite a chunky piece of kit that looks like there's a lot of fabric on there is that a problem for if you're running in the heat does it get quite hot around the midriff um it, yeah i mean when i take it off i've been running on a really hot day long runs it's noticeably wet you know it's like it does gather sweat moisture all of those kind of things. Um, you, you, when you're yeah. running, you you, ha you do have to pay a little bit of attention to it at aid stations, different places. I does, you know, you might need to make a few adjustments. It can gather a little bit, but overall, if you've got the sizing right, mainly you forget that it's there. And particularly if you're not carrying a lot of items in there, you know, phone keys, card, a bit of cash, it go, it just disappears. If you start to stuff it full of gels and things, you're, you're obviously going to become a little bit more aware of the fact that you're wearing it. But I don't have too much of a problem with the fabric overall. Cool. Well, certainly I, I, I it's a popular one amongst the run testers. So um, I was expecting to see that at some point on these, these videos. Wonderful. Okay. And let's move on to your final pick. The, the fourth thing, or in your case, kind of fifth uh, option that you've got on your, on your list. What have, what have you gone for? So I've gone away from stuff you wear into stuff you eat, and I've picked this. It's, a, it's a, an all-natural gel called Vala. Um, it's, it's fairly new. It's only about a year old. Uh, it's produced in Wales and the UK. Um, it's a new company, and it's made up. It's got about six ingredients. So it's got lemon and lime juice, has dates, um, chia seeds. It's got a little bit of uh, salt uh, for electrolytes. There's one other, which is, uh, yeah, it's got maple syrup. And that's it. So simple ingredients. It's, it's a bit like a kind of, it's a bit like a dainty paste, 
bit more of a sort of loose datey paste than it is one of the old school kind of gloopy gels. But I love the fact that it tastes natural. It's real food. It's all real food. It tastes really good. You actually look forward to eating it. And I carry it with me in my pocket on almost every run. Uh, I've got a bit of a thing. I don't, I haven't quite worked out why, but I can go out for a short run and I can be three miles in and suddenly my energy just goes, my blood sugar seems to plummet. So I always like to have something in my back pocket just in case. And when, when that's happening, I, you know, if I'm out on a normal run, like a three mile, five mile run, and I find myself having to take a gel, I don't really want to be taking chemicals and maltodextrin and other things. So I go for it because I like the idea that this is just stuff that you might eat normally in your everyday particularly if you're going to reach for it on runs where you you know you probably shouldn't really be taking a gel but i need to um i i, I don't take gels myself unless i'm doing a marathon and i'm really tired and somebody throws one at me that's that's the only time i'll i'll have one but for people watching this maybe who haven't done a hadn't haven't taken gels before should they be looking at an, an all-natural gel to, to test um test it out if it if it's worth worth them actually using I'm a big fan of all natural. Like I've, I've come on a bit of a journey. I've gone from using the sort of classic kind of goo style maltodextrin based stuff, which I find quite gloopy. And I've, there, there's a whole range. It's quite a big sort of growing trend, a whole range of natural gels that are out there that are made from simple ingredients that you know what they look like when, when you see them written down. And I personally, it's yeah. still sugar. Okay, fine. But it's, I think, you know, it's stuff that you probably, you'd feel kind of okay giving this to a five-year-old child. I don't think I'd be happy giving some of, that other, some of the other gels to my, to my son because I know what's in this. It's all natural food. And I think, yeah, there's, a, there's an idea in my head, which is that good, you know, good nutrition shouldn't stop the minute you get to the start of the race. And if you focus on nutrition, you spend a lot of time thinking about all the healthy stuff that you're putting into your body up until a race day. And then all of a sudden, just because it's a race, you start sticking down things with E-numbers and chemicals and things you don't know what they are. It just seems a bit counterintuitive to me. So I would recommend people trying out natural gels. You know, they've, you're getting a little bit more nutrient bang for your buck in these things as well. And I just think from a, if you don't even go along with all of that and you're not, you don't care about healthy eating, fair dues, but they taste great. And that's a big factor. You know, if you've got a gel that you actually look forward to eating when you're, 20 miles into a marathon instead of something you're reaching for that you're thinking oh god i've got to have another one of those um that's a big bonus nice and um when would you suggest people maybe look at using these because i i see people at the start of park runs taking them and you know three or four in some pe and people's belts doing a 10k is it is it do you need it for that for that distance or would you just use it purely for longer distance races I, I will mainly use gels for longer distance races. I think some people, you know, I think if you've had a good breakfast and you've eaten well and you're going to a 5K or 10K, you've, you've definitely got enough stores in the tank to get through that. Whether or not psychologically you feel like you want to have a bit more ready energy, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's one thing some people do. I, I personally would start using gels from a half marathon and upwards. Um, although, like I said, I carry one for just in case. And then how and when you use them and how you time them is a big thing, you know, for debate and people have their own methods. I, you know, I see a lot of people chugging gels before races. And then one thing I do know is almost like the minute you start taking them in a race situation, you're going to have to keep taking them incrementally because your blood sugar is going to go up and down. So once you start, you've got to carry on. So you might, if you're going to take them early, you're going to have to take more. I tend to wait uh, until I'm about 90 minutes in, which is, you know, that's when your glycogen tanks should be empty. So maybe a little bit before the 90 minutes so that I've, I keep even. But yeah, I don't, I don't tend to take them before a race. Interesting. Sage words. Well, what? That, that's it. How much do these cost you? So these are £2.50 each and you can get a box of 10 for £24. So again, they're not cheap, but you are buying all natural, well-sourced ingredients. So yeah, you're paying a premium for what goes in uh here. And how does that compare with the cheapest uh, non-natural gels on the market? Oh, you can pick you can pick the non-naturals up for less than a pound, but okay. you know the the fact is that they're using maltodextrin, which is one of the cheapest sort of sugars that you can buy. So you know you pay your money and you get what you pay for. <laughs> okay, well that's that's your list of um, essential running kit and accessories for our essentials guide. Thank you very much.
Thank you for listening. So there we have it, another Run Testers Essential Running Kit Guide. Don't forget to like, subscribe and click the little bell, as well as check out some of the other videos that we've got on the channel. Everything from the best running shoes, road and trail, to headphones and all sorts of different watch brands that you can get out there to make your running just a little bit more enjoyable and probably make yourself a bit faster. Catch you later. Peace.